Well, girls and guys, welcome back to the channel. So, I've got a good one for, the, for today. We've got a Maserati Grand Sport Cabriolet uh, in for a very odd issue. The issue is, indicators will go on no matter what. Uh, the only way to stop it is by disconnecting the battery, even if the car is locked, still going on. Unlocked, still going on. Now, this also comes up with fuel inertia cutoff switch and the hazards going. Uh, I'll show you the fault. So, engine on, sounds lovely. So there you go. Uh, okay, we've got quite a few faults there. Maybe because we're low on juice, but uh, limited range and it says fuel cutoff. Close the door. Yeah, fuel cutoff switch active. Now, we had a lot of fun trying to work out what this was. We did diagnostics, weren't coming up with any, any faults. Um, thought it could be the body control module, uh, which is located in here, which is right next to the diagnostic port. I haven't put this all back, by the way. It, it, it could be this. Well, that's the fuse box, the modules up behind it. Thought it could be that causing the problem. So we had that removed and... Uh... So yeah, we sent the module for testing and lo and behold, wasn't faulty. So that left me very confused. So then we um, we thought, well, let's look at what it's doing. We've got hazard lights flashing and we've got the fuel cutoff switch as a fault. Uh, and then the obviously interior light would always stay on and it was very, very weird. So we thought, well, let's start with the basics. Has it got a water leak? Is there water ingress anywhere? So found there's light mold going on the inner door here. Aha, uh -huh. no problem at all. Right, so if we've got mould, that means water's got in. If water's got in, water could have got into something. Looked around a little bit more, removed that cover there, thought, yep, there is definitely something going on here. Um, doesn't smell damp particularly, but removed this, found traces of water, and then underneath the seat, there is the fuel cutoff switch. Now, that is the inertia cutoff. So if you have an accident in a Fiat Alpha, Maserati, Ferrari, they're all the same. Uh, that will stop the fuel pump from working and also triggers the hazard lights and the fuel cutoff switch to go on. So what we've got to do, if you see the uh, everything's flashing, the hazards are flashing, what I'm going to do is just give the fuel inertia switch a pinch, off, on, off, and let the interior light as well, on. And all I'm doing is just giving it a squeeze. Brilliant. So, <laughs> all it comes down to is the fuel cutoff switch should normally, when, when activated, should stop the fuel pump so the car shouldn't go. So it threw me off a little bit thinking, why, why I mean, if this is the case, it, it shouldn't run. It shouldn't have run, but it does. So that's why I didn't think fuel cutoff switch initially. I thought it was an electrical component, uh, a module failure. Turns out we were wrong. Got an inertia switch on the way, which is probably the same as a Punto, an Alpha, any Fiat, anything like that. So, got one on the way, fingers crossed. Well, not fingers crossed, it is gonna fix it. For now, go put a cable tie around it and zip that bad boy up so the battery doesn't go flat and the hazard lights go off. All right, we are back with the Maserati. So, we got a package from Scuderia Parts. It's just fun. What we needed, is the um, fuel inertia switch comes in the Ferrari packaging for the Maserati. Now, this is the bit that we're all gonna enjoy. Hold on, there it is. So here's the switch and the part number, which is 7790538. If you were to Google that, you would see that this switch is the same as the Alfa Romeo 159, including the Barrera Spiders, everything, everything from the Barrera chassis is the same. Uh, it's also the same as 147s. Um, oh God, there's a massive list. 159 Barrera Spider, 147. I believe some late 156s. Can't remember if I saw that on the list or not. Um, and pretty much any Fiat from like 2005 onwards, I believe. <coughs> this switch is in pretty much every, um, 
every Fiat Alpha, Maserati, Ferrari, and probably some of the Lancers as well. So um, it was a whopping, now here's the bit that you're gonna enjoy, from Ferrari, 19 pounds. So even if I could have got one from Fiat, they'd have probably been the same price, I'd have still gone with Ferrari just to have the Ferrari box. I am that sad. We also have two drop links to do on it as well. One of them just got a little bit of play. So we're gonna replace them. We also ordered them from Scud Rear Parts. And there they are. Things first, let's fit the switch. Now, I've risen the seat up as much as possible and there she is. The question is, how the hell do you get that out? Right, I've removed that. I tried to get my hand to it, but it must be screwed in because I can't. So we've got two Allen keys at the back, two covers and two Allen keys at the front. C is going to have to get lifted out of the way. Buzzing. There's certain times in the motor trade that are really testing. Don't you remember manual seats when you could just flip it straight back and you'd be done? There's the Allen key one and two over there. The two rear ones are already out. Well, there it is. There's Allen key one and Allen key two and water number three and four. That's not good. So we need to find out what's going on there. Um, can't really, there it is there. So I uh, need to undo them two Allen keys and then find out what's going on with the water. All right, that one's out. Pull the yellow tab, push, click, out. So this is the uh, foldy one. Oops, sorry, there it is. Yeah, that's the faulty one. I hope anyway, yeah, it's got the green paint on it. So I'm gonna fit the other one in. Then I might take this apart because I've always wanted to know what goes in there. Okay, I fitted the new one. You do have to click it down. Don't know if you heard the click. Um, so you will have to click it down. And now let's... We're good. Right. Happy. What was that? Oh, low fuel. Not my problem. The main thing is this is in there. So now I'm gonna get it back in that hole. Yay. Oh, going good. That's in, that's on. Uh, now it's just time to bolt the seat down, but what I have noticed is there is an open wire there. So I'm gonna speak to the customer about why that is there. Didn't spot that before. Might have had a seat issue or might be rubbing against the rail. Who knows, we'll look into it. Right, it's all together. But in the interest of uh, loving cars, the battery went flat. So I've had to manage to get the seat into a position where I can get to all four bolts and tighten it all up. Now, while that is slowly charging, uh, I'm gonna do the drop links, and I believe I've got one more parking sensor to replace, I've changed two. Um, reason why I'm not gonna jump start it and get it running is because it has no fuel, so <laughs> I have to charge it that way. Uh, hopefully by the time drop links and everything are done, we should be able to take it on a very, very short road test. Okay, so we're replacing the drop link, so I can see you've got one bolt there, and then this goes into the arm. I don't think it goes all the way through. I am a bit confused there. And you join me on the other side of the car, so these just screw in to the lower arm. Now, it is going to be one of the moments where you need to make sure these are perfectly square when going in, because if you cross-thread it, you are replacing the whole lower arm. And that's all the fun that we don't need today. So uh, this is a 17 mil. Uh, you need a short stubby 17, or if you don't have one, you need an adjustable headed 17 and make it work. Okay, so I've changed this parking sensor and this one, that was fairly easy. So I just went undone these and then did the mongoose around the back and took it out, nice and easy. It's just one clip. They twist 90 and pull back uh, and that's it. We are all good to go. So I'm gonna check on the condition of the battery. Hopefully it's charged and we can start this bad boy up. Okay, so I've been for a, a nice little road test just up and down after changing the drop links. And um, these things sound so bloody nice. Uh, it is the Ferrari F430 engine in these, I believe. Um, and they just sound, oh, uh, they sound like you wanna do terrible things, but you can't because it's not your car and it's a customer's car. So after a nice road test, this Maserati is done. <laughs>